staff, friends of the institution. Welcome to our first spring 2023 artist talk with visiting artist Cho Win Lee, who is visiting with us virtually from California. So welcome Cho Win. And a couple quick notes. She is born in China and she received her BFA in graphic design from St. Cloud State University and received her MFA in visual studies from the Minnesota College of Art and Design. And we welcome her here to Valley City State University from her show that she was graciously allowed us to showcase here and has been very interactive with the students in the Center for the Arts. And she has exhibited through the nation here in the United States and also internationally. So we welcome you, Cho Wen Lee. Thank you, Angela, for the introduction. Okay. Um, my name is Cho Wen Lee, and it's such a great pleasure meeting all uh, virtually. And I will share my art and design journey with all of you. Um, let me play my slide. Okay. So the name for my solo exhibition is called Calligraphy. Um, it's a made up word. So I combined two of the most important design elements in my work, color and topography. Um, as a visual artist, I have been interested in the space between linguistic and pictorial communication to connect with others. And I use color and typography to help me express myself. So I will talk more about my practice and approach to them. Um, before that, I like to talk a little bit about myself and my background. Original come from China. So on this Google map image, you can see where my hometown is. Um, it's called Hunan a province located in the south part of China. So the two images here, both of them are places from my hometown, Hunan. But as you can see, the one on the left shows is traditional architecture and nature thing. The one on the right is its modern look. So both of them coexist in today's Hunan, but they look very different. The population for Hunan is about, as of 2020, is over 66 million. So compared with the state of Minnesota, um, where I first stayed when I first come to the United States, Hunan and Minnesota have very similar square miles. But the population for Hunan is 12 times more than Minnesota. So still, um, there are more and more people move to Hunan from different places because the job opportunity. So people come to there, they speak different languages and have different cultures. So that is why in today, uh, people there are still keeping their own uh, various living habits and they speak, they speak different dialects there. So raised in Hunan, I learned how to respect and appreciate those diversities when I was a child. And I, it also makes me very curious and want to see the big picture of the world. So as the only child, I'm also the first generation college student in my family. So I don't have any family member work in the art industrial. My mom is accountant and my dad is an engineer. Um, my art journey started actually when I was only six. Um, so the two images on the screen are pieces I did 14 years ago um, before my college. So I went to art classes when I was a six during the weekend and I learned basic drawing skills like charcoal drawing, watercolor painting. So now think back, um, those time become one of my favorite childhood memories. Um, I since then, I start to experience art, but I, um, but at that time it's just for fun. But I wasn't take the art very seriously, um, even though I enjoy it. I have to quit it, the art classes at age twelve, so I can concentrate 
in my middle school and high school education. So I want to say the education between Chinese and United States is very different. It's, felt, it's very competitive if you want to get a good university. So that's the reason why I have to quit other classes. So I spend more time on subjects like math, um, Chinese, English, biology, and others, but not art. Um, even though I still spend some personal time when I have to working on art pieces, like those two on the screen. So what is graph design and what does a graph design do? Um, I don't think I ever heard the term graph design before I came to the United States. And I had no idea that one day I will teach and working in this field. So my design journey um, started in the 2010. So we have old Chinese saying says, opportunities always come with challenges. So in 2010, I decided to study abroad in the United States. So study abroad truly is a life-changing decision I made. But now thinking back, it's confused and emotional challenge at first because no one in my family could have ever told me what the college experience and what living in different country could look like. So overall, I will say it's a journey that already and could continue to bring a distinctive perspective for my thinking, being, and making. So I went to St. Cloud State University and I graduated in year 2014 with a BFA degree in graph design. So as I reflect on my time at college, I had experience that were both positive and areas I struggled as most students like many of you. So some of the challenging aspects were more related with emotional challenging. I still remember it really stressed me out when I need to declare a major at that time. So at first I chose accounting. Um, so many because just uh, the job opportunity. And since my mom is accountant, she can share her experience me with me as well. Um, but I find out that I really don't enjoy the class and my true passion still in art and design. So one lesson I learned in a hard way is that no matter what the world may say, you really need to follow your heart. So it sounds cliche, but it's truly it is because everyone is unique and you need to consider all of those factors that makes you unique. So figure out who you could like to be as a person and a professional at first. So, but those are not easy and it takes time. So another challenging is navigating the college culture and college system. Um, it was a big culture shock as an international student, um, but I also have lots of positive experience, like including having very trustworthy mentors, teachers, professors, developing friendships. So thanks to the people around me, I enjoyed those four years and did not feel alone during those four years. So the art program and ACSU allows me to uh, have a chance to work with professors and classmates very closely since we have very small size studio course. Um, so this is a, a class photo. I remember it's a day for the visiting designer. So as you can see, Professor Keith is on the front right and the visiting designers is on the front left. So I'm the one holding the book and the book is written by the visiting designer. So here are examples of my work from undergrad years. So those are all class projects. Uh, during those four years, I feel grateful that I got a chance to meet with those people. So the professors there not only taught me what is graph design, but because of them, I see that education 
can really make a difference in a person's life. So that is one of the, I would say, the biggest reason why I want to teach after graduation. So I want to show uh, especially those two projects. Um, this is a hot spice brand named Crazy3 uh, for the package design class. So through the class, I learned that design is not flat. It's not only flat. So how to design for three dimensional objects, even for multiple dimension, is very important. So I researched life circle for the product. So instead of using glass, I decided I want to use the um, environmental friendly paper. So also found that the life circle for the spice is very short. So using the environmental friendly paper, uh, not only make the product become more eco-friendly, also help the company saving their cost, so it's more sustainable. So this is an infographic piece for the course design system in my senior years. Uh, through this infographic, I'm telling a story about mercury. So what is mercury? The mercury emission, where it comes from, and what we should do about it to protect Minnesota's lakes. So the process, including research, uh, I also did phone interview with people from environmental agencies, data collecting, data analyzing, and create icons and charts design. So my study and ACSU helped me enter the world of design. So after that, I had the chance to uh, working with clients uh, from many different areas. So to improve my design thinking and critic skills, I decided to continue my education at uh, Minneapolis College of Art and Design, MCAT. I was lucky enough to get there and finish my MFA degree in the year uh, 2016. So the MFA program and MCAT is a mental-based one, and it enrolls students from different areas. So I had the same class with uh, students, classmates from areas like uh, painting, ceramic, sculpture, printmaking, and many more. So the cross-disciplinary enables me to embracing graph design from a more experimental uh, perspective. So the images on the left uh, shows the MFA studio space, and the one on the right shows the gallery space. So different from my um, BFA study and different from my experience working with clients. So the program M MCAT gave me more opportunity to explore topics and subjects I am interested in. So what I like to make. So for every project, we installed our work in the gallery space and we also had critique there. So as a design student at that time, it was a big challenging for me um, because I used to the model that as a designer, we working for clients to help them solve their problem. So we need to researching our target users, find out their needs, and came out with design solution for them, but not create work for ourselves. So in the early stage of my studio practice and MCAT, I experienced um, the feeling of being lost and uncertainty. So I was not sure what I want to make. So, uh, but after talking with my mentors, um, classmates, visiting artists and other designers, uh, I find that the more I make, the more I know how to make. So here is my studio space and MCAT, um, different from my previous commercial design experience. I also find that setting rules no longer limit my design process, but instead those rules and limitations become tools they help me make design decisions in the problem-solving process. So some rules I gave to myself 
are very simple. Like I start with black and white because I think you know most of design if it doesn't work for black and white, it will not work for color. So another example for the limits is the time limits. Let's say I give myself two hours, and then within those two hours, I have to concentrate and finish a post design. So things like that. So as a Chinese woman living in the United States, I always um, feel very interested in different cultures and different language system. Uh, one of the biggest invention in the history of typography is mover type. So which allows for the mass production. So mover type has been also used early in China, as you can see on the top right. So those are three Chinese characters in the mover type, but it has proved less useful there because the writing system in China contains 10 thousands of different characters. So if you're thinking about you are in the printing shop, you are, po are printing a poster and you will need to find character, um, Chinese character, it will take you forever to find one because there's just too many different characters. So I have friends um, you know, around me who are learning Chinese language and they said it's so difficult. Um, it's not easy, but if you recognize the idea behind those characters, their meanings, and you will find the majority of them associated with symbols and images. So for example, on the bottom right shows three Chinese characters in three columns. So song, mountain, horse. So the third column, the one on the right, shows the modern Chinese, how they look like in today. The middle one is the early form of Chinese writing. The shape of these characters are often described as pictographic. So they represent stylized drawing of objects they represent. So this picture shows my making process uh, for the first piece I did at MCAT. So I chose different words and typeface, print them in black and white and cut them in identical squares. Then I just move them around. Um, I was trying to find the perfect form and the counter form. So not only Chinese letters, I also test them in um, you know, different languages as well. So the two frame piece are what the finished piece uh, looks like in the gallery space. I took two among all and I add different colors to each print in order to breaking the existing visual system. So making them become more complex. Uh, this work is also explore the relationship between legibility and illegibility, um, typography shape as image. So here shows more details. So on screen is a quote from David Carson. If, if you don't know who he is, he is a well-known American graphic designer and design director. So he said, don't confuse legibility with communication. Just because something is legible doesn't mean it communicates. And more importantly, doesn't mean it communicates the right thing. So as a designer, I understand the need for legibility but I'm more concerned and I want to um, create a work that communicating something more visceral, expressive and imaginative. I'm influenced by the global style in contemporary graph design. So they include transforming the simple 2D space of the printed graphic into an abstract deep space that seems to extend from the poster to the wall and even the words beyond. So the center sewing piece was made with a very different process, but has a similarity with the color work. So breaking down a system and finding the way to recombine it. So instead of using digital tool, uh, the physical piece was made by 
pens, I used the hundreds of small pieces of paper and combine them by uh, using the weaving skills I learned. So here shows what's the making um, process behind it. The height for the piece is, is it was a large piece for me, is a 110 inches for the height and six inches for the width. So the graduate program at MCAT is an intensive, is a two year, uh, two years program. As an international student, I know that I want to stay in the United States for job opportunity after graduation. So I did feel a lot of pressure. So I always feel like I was playing catch up or piecing the puzzle together to figure things out at that time. But to get more real industrial experience, I applied and worked with many clients. So here is a short list of clients I have pleasure to working with. So next, I want to share a client-based work. Um, this is a responsive web design I created for an architecture design firm. Um, they're based in Minnesota, Minneapolis. The company is named James Dayton Design. So in the summer of um, 2015, I was hired as a designer to work on their website rebranding and also work on the design and website builder. Um, it, this project was a bit challenging because as a design student, I know the basic web language like HTML and CSS, but I am not an expert in that area. So I self-taught a design program, which is called Adobe Muse. Um, it was a design, web design and building platform program without writing code. But design is an industrial change a lot, um, like Adobe Flash, uh, Adobe Muse get discontinued as well. So here shows what the web interface design looks like. The idea here is instead of using polished photo of their projects they did, which is most architecture company did, we decided to use Google map image of their projects as homepage um, background. Uh, if you think about architecture design, it can be really improvement to an area and also it build environments. So through the Google uh, use of Google images, it can establish a feeling of trust. So through the existing building, so when the visitors uh, visit their sites, they see those Google photos. They know that these buildings are not only in the stage of modeling, they actually exist in the real life. So for the interface design part, um, as creative as we want to be, uh, we decide to make it consistent to their old website. So the visitors still recognize it's still JDD and it will not detached from their old version. So here is an example about what the using of Google image looks like. So one lesson I learned through working with many clients is as a designer, we really need to be a lifelong learner and self-learning is very important and necessary skill to have. So working with clients and working as an artist, a maker, for me is very different, but I enjoy both. So as an artist, I want to engage viewers in a way that invokes playing games and figure out puzzles. So next project I like to show is called Randomlist. Um, you can also find those in the exhibition. So the QR codes designed by me linked to my random poetry haiku generator. So haiku is a very short form of Japanese poetry. The essence of haiku is cutting. So haiku is often represented by the juxtaposition of two images or ideas and cutting word between them. 
So among all the QR codes, there are three different types. The general black one, which works as a QR code and functioning as a QR code as well. So it's a scannable. It looks like exactly like the normal QR codes you will see in your daily lives. The color iconic one on the center look like, looks like an image. So in this example, you can see the pixelated horse on the center and still functioning as a QR code. So it's also scannable. But the third one is different. It's geometric one, uh, looks also like image, but does not work as a QR code. So it's not scannable. I use different types of QR codes to represent the similarity relationships between image and type. So the simi similar here, I use uh, three columns and different typeface to represent the relationship between legibility and illegibility. I design a font on the left and name it um, random list font and use the for illegible poem. The one on the right is designed by Professor Eric Brand and MCAT, who is also my mentor and MCAT. The name for it is bubble dot font and used it for the legible poem. So the idea and the purpose for the project is letting the viewers pick up one random poem and understand in their own way so they can create their own stories. Um, as a designer, I want to expose the essence of communication. So I want to provide avenues that we do not take very often, but do find similarity. So that if you think about the idea of randomness, it can be easily found in our daily life. For example, if you go to a Chinese restaurant after the meal, you'll get a fresh cookie. And some of you might think the sentence, words, sometimes is the lucky numbers. Uh, reading all those papers in those fresh cookies uh, for you on that day, it brings you good luck. All these are random. So in addition, the idea of randomness can be easily found in nature, um, as well as the history of poetry. Um, so poems, they have several random words. They need to come out with a poems based on the words they have. Um, in addition, so the, this work is also influenced by artists, uh, John Cage, Chance Operation, William Berger, the Cathar Matos. As a woman who come from China, now living in the United States, I'm in an in-between position. And these also bring a distinctive perspective for me to understand the concept of language. So this is a quote from Poland-based uh, visual artist Joshua Berger. And he argues that language is anything that communicates the information so type is no longer merely the letters and punctuation markers that form words, sentence, and paragraphs, but the building blocks of meaning in whatever form that meaning arise. So I totally agree it, and I support this idea also in the context of my work. And I believe type can be an image, type can be a sound, um, type also can be a color. So color plays an equal important role in transcend language. The readability for the color is universe. It can be simple, but also very complex, approachable language that attracts people across different age, different culture backgrounds. So as a design designer, um, I'm interested in using this universal language, create work that is accessible and maintain both um, playful simplicity and meaningful uh, complexity. So the project on the screen is called Color Language. It's a colored mapping language system um, that encoding each letters uh, with different colors and connecting the same color letters by using the lines. So the text I use here comes from Charles Darwin's 
books uh, on the original species. So instead of reading articles by words, phrase, the viewers will decode these systems through color data. Um, one purpose for the projects is teaching people of all ages easily access color theory, so which is why it can be used across different medium. Um, the color square block are designed for children, kids to learn letters and basic color theory. So I hand paint all these. Um, each letter has its own color. And on the other side of the square block uh, is complementary color and the color in the same family. I built this website and I use the website for the people who had experience using web to test their color memories. So viewers will need to hover each color rectangle so they can see what's the letter behind it. I also use other shapes like circle to indicate uh, punctuations. I also invite people participating in the projects. So they will need to connect rectangular by following specific instructions. So the tools um, the people have are color pencils, their visions, and hands. So there are 26 colors in the po each poster, the same number of the provided color pencils. So each color has a correspond corresponding color pencil. So what they will need to connect colors is I give them three rules. So they can connect in rectangulars that show the same color by using the same color pencil. Rule two is they can connect in rectangular that show complementary color by using one of a color pencil. Um, rule three is they can connect in rectangular show the same hue or same color family by using one of the color pencil. So they can follow just one of them. Uh, the way how re they read it, they start from top left to the bottom right, the way how uh, they read articles. So one interesting thing I found through this project is like painters usually correctly complete much faster than people from other area. So all that is the new new. It's also included in this exhibition. Um, this is series of project in turn designed for online book uh, exchange event, uh, which build a huge virtual library so people can get in and easily find books they are looking for. As a designer, I used uh, vivid colors and geometry shapes to indicate the power of knowledge reading. So for me, uh, finding a book, especially an unknown book, is like discovering a beautiful landscape in the world. So open a book, you will find people and places of every kind. To invite the viewers in touch with the piece, um, I was able to grow it and incorporate AR um, technology. So by using the Archive, which is an easy way using augmented reality tool for art. So by using it, I link the animated video piece with digital art to create and other layers for people to experience it. I also introduced the Archive to my classes on um, digital design and students really like it. It's a very um, beginner friendly tool. So here is a text I used. Um, it's a poem from Jen Baskerville. So she is a formal elementary teacher, principal and um, teacher educator. As I use the poem here, since it reminds me some wonderful experience I had, um, I also really like the ending part of this poem. Um, Besides the designer and artist, I also spend a lot of time working on my research. So I also could like to um, mention Emotion Lab. 
is a research lab to create positive emotional experience for people. Um, I'm the co-founder for this emotion lab with Yang Ai Kim. If you're interested, you can find more updates um, and more projects on our website. So this is one of the recent projects we've been working on. Um, is a VR interface design for a project named Happiness Participatory Medium. Uh, many designers and artists inspire me, and one of them is uh, Rafa Rastyle. So this is Rafa Rastyle work in a garage space. So he is a web artist and use the internet as a canvas for his work. And his work has a big impact on me and also the introducing me a new way to think about how playful design can be. So in his art piece, uh, you can see simple shapes in striking colors. And also this is not static image. Those are moving images. And so there's constantly changing in a way, never the same. Um, also his works exist online and also in the public spaces for everyone to enjoy. So I think uh, his work makes the work that in a way that looks simple, but is pleasure for everyone to interact with. So now thinking back on all the years working on the design, on the art, I think design for me is a life, a way of lifestyle. So I really um, like the way it's able to uh, encourage creative thinking and generate new ways of approaching things. So I plan to continue push the boundaries of design and be just curious and interested about everything, be really willing to ask questions and answer those questions. So here is my contact information. And uh, if you have any question or if maybe you want to see uh, more of my projects, uh, feel free to visit my website. It's just my name, chowenli.com. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chowen Li. Um, very informative of your overview of design and your journey here from being in China to the United States and a first generation college students. Mm -hmm. Wow, <laughs> that's that has been a journey. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's um, a journey that is like, I've been here in the 2010. So now I think about it, it's not that many years, but mm -hmm. there's just lots of things happening within those years. Yeah. Yes. Um, and for folks tuning in, feel free to throw um, questions in the chat. Um, I have a first question. What advice would you give the first generation college students today? Mm -hmm. um, I think first thing is don't, don't feel you are alone. You know, you do have, even though you are the first person in your family to have those opportunity to be, you know, get those teaching resource, but there's still many people. So we are a big group. And also there's lots of resource on the campus. Like I experience very trustworthy professors and I developing friendship there. So I will say, you know, just don't afraid to, um, you know, say hello to people and go to the events. So those are gonna be the chance for you to meet other people, other person. Uh, second thing is, you know, I think navigating the, as I mentioned during my talk, navigating the um, university system is very different. So I will say, you know, we have lots of great uh, resource of the advising you know, centers and mentors, I'm sure. And, you know, VCSU, you all have those. So I will say having those conversations with them will be great as well. And do you miss doing traditional of the painting drawing from your first couple images you showed? Do you miss doing that or do you prefer like mixing up doing both digital and graphic design? I, I think they are very 
different in terms of the artist expression. You know, they looks different,、um, but there's still very similarities among them. I do missing those, but I did spend my time working on those as well.、Um, you know, I I'm not creating those for my research. For exhibition, but I do, like for example, I have couple pieces at my home, and I frame those just for decoration purpose, and those are in that style. So I I still doing doing all different kinds of arts, yeah. Which is important as a designer, since designing a lot for others. Because I know I remember during the talk you were saying you felt lost. At that time of MCAD of creating, was it from designing for others or just not designing for yourself? I think I feel lost because I don't know what to, how to create design piece just for myself.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was a big change. So that, especially you know, I think graduate program and under pro, grad、uh, under. You know, undergraduate program is very different. So it's for the graduate program. It's not just the you know finish. There's no projects and there's no you know project descriptions. So how to create the work that is talk about the message you want to express is very different. It's very challenging. Yeah, but as I mentioned, I I do feel like you need to. Especially as an artist and also as a visual,、um, you know, designers,、uh, we need to developing very consistent、uh, studio time and start making stuff. And because the more I making, the more I know how to make. Yeah, which I think is important for in especially in the visual world of like making, keep making. You know, there might be a failure here or there. <laughs> yeah. Just- Smile later and go on. <laughs> yeah, exactly.、Um, and do you find? Because I know in one of the pieces in the gallery right now is the motion graphic、um, video you sent, the connecting the dots. And、mm-hmm. when you created the piece, did you work with a musician on getting the music, or did you choose the music afterwards? How did that get created? So for that specific piece, I choose the music after. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do have experience collaborating with musicians, so the visual and the music、uh, is a live piece performance for a different one. So I have experience for all those different approach.、Um, when I, but I usually using a storyboard to help me just the mapping. You know what the story、uh, will be looks like is a good tool. So I able to. Show my idea.、Um, pe- other people can see my idea as well. Which I found very interesting when seeing that piece and then listening to it. That that was my first question when I was listening to it. It's like, oh, how did this get put together? Because sometimes you plan out the storyboard and then get the、mm-hmm. music, and just watching it is so mesmerizing. <laughs> There's times I just sit in the gallery, just watching it and listening to it on headphones. It's just. Very relaxing.、Mm-hmm. On yeah, I will say music is very powerful. It definitely bring another layer to the piece.、Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's the end music I chose.、Um, but I've been testing, you know, with many different ones. Some work, some doesn't work. So I think that's the music so far. I personally really enjoying. So I think. That fits better with the message I want to talk about. Yeah, in terms of emotion, the speed, the rhythm, everything. Yeah, especially with the emotion labs. It's I、mm-hmm. haven't seen the site yet. I that will be my next thing after today's talk. It just seems very interactive for everyone, of no matter what age you are.、Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. So I do want to approach my audience from different ages. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think they do have very different、uh, reaction, and、mm-hmm. you know, yeah, I, I'm curious. I just want to see. Oh, if you know, if kids they interact with this one, right? They don't have much 
experience, like what we did, what their feedback, what their response it is. Mm -hmm. So that's something I'm, I'm always curious. Yeah. yeah. And I have a question from the audience. Um, you mentioned the importance of learning to design for multiple surfaces, not just flat surfaces and mm -hmm. have in the past used materials that can be eco-friendly. At what point during your design process do you make decisions concerning materials and the form that your design should take? Mm -hmm. I think that's a very good question um, because when I think about you know, graph design and sustainability, eco-friendly, um, most of the time we think about material choice, right? Like the the paper, the ink. Um, but I think as a designer, there's more than what we can do. I think like if you think about design as layers, like the first you the first layer will be more like apply to senses. Like what do you see, what do you feel? If you're in a store, you know, you can feel the paper choice, like the weight. But the second layer is more like the message. Mm -hmm. But I think what's most important is for design is design for the change. So mm -hmm. as a designer, we can um, we can actively uh, promote more like healthier lifestyle. We do we can make changes for the you know the world the society. So I think we need to promote the the message that I think you also agree with your clients mm -hmm. and in terms of design for multiple, um, you know, dimension. Um, I think is, you know, we, we all, when we first start training as a designer, we all learn just design for the 2D. So there's a very large learning curve, uh, how mm -hmm. to um, change from 2D to 3D, even, you know, multiple dimension. Um, mm -hmm. I think, you know, sometimes if you're talking with a sculpture, you know, ceramic, and uh, just share your experience, uh, you learn a lot, but also just observing and, you know, just discovering the things in your daily life. Yeah. Okay. It's especially of what you said in the talk about communicating, like the legibility is not important, but what you're communicating it and how you're communicating it is like the most important thing as a designer or even as an artist. Exactly. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, another question how do you determine the outcome of your work? Is it based on personal tastes? And how do you know the work is done, considering that most of the works in the show are abstract? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, I think it's fairly, when I was in the programs, when I was a student, the deadline helped me determine when the project is done, right? Mm -hmm. um, but now I revisit it, especially as, you know, as full-time like teacher and professor. And I try to have personal studio time. And when I was in my studio, uh, sometimes I revisit my work. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's, you know, fairly 100% done, finished. So I will say for me, I still thinking about they all still in the developing stage, I can always, you know, revisit them. It's more like I'm a developing a library and all this is more like a visual language in my library. Mm -hmm. And I am writing certain chapters, but the book is not finished yet. Mm -hmm. I can always, you know, go back and find those language and find the, those chapters and continue working on those, yeah. I know the one piece you were talking about with the color graphs, with especially with the stories you were using, the making the marks with the colored pencils, that was very interesting to me. How did you choose what color went to which letter out of curiosity? Yeah, I just choose based on the alphabet order. And then I just start with, you know, the like a rainbow color. So there's an order. So I just, some decision is made more like, um, personal preference and mm -hmm. yeah, in that way. Which made, it was very, just looking at it, I wish that piece was here too, but just seeing mm -hmm. it was like, oh, how interactive and 
just how brightly colored and the book of what you chose, would you choose any other books to do that again too, of the color? Yeah. I did chose another book and I even chose my personal, you know, just writing. Sometimes mm -hmm. I just ran some, you know, I also apply that because mm -hmm. I think it's more like I set out the rules, but it can, I create a system, but the system can be applied to many different texts. So I also was curious about, oh, if I apply these to different text, different message, what will those be looks like? So I did try and apply it to different text. Um, that's another thing I think, you know, for example, this project, I can continue working on it. I don't think it ends and I can continue building uh, more pieces and, and for this project as well. No, definitely. And just thinking you tied art, graphic design, music, and also the haiku in English. I want to make sure to tie back to that, the poetry, which that's always a fun part. It, and just your own haikus, right? Or did you get a recapping back of, did you create most of those haikus or were those other haikus you found? So those are the haikus. Uh, I used the, the, it's not created by me. Uh, oh. I use the, you know, the haiku generator and those are generated. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that's something, oh, go on. I am so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So sorry to interrupt, but um, I do think now looking back at my experience, um, mm -hmm. a lot of people give me inspiration. It's not visual artists. It's not only visual artists. Um, the, you know, like the music, the poise and, you know, can be, we can get a lot of ideas from all different kinds of people. Mm -hmm. um, so um, that's why I think the cross disciplinary is very important. Mm -hmm. And even, you know, I heard from Angela that the audience is gonna be students from all the campers. So I think that's great. So, you know, not only art design students will get some, you know, inspiration from the talk, I do think it can be applied to many different majors, many different areas. Um, now, the institution I'm currently at is you know, Santa Clara University. We are teaching classes. It's also a mixed group. So I'm teaching class with students from computer science, art major, and bio biology, psychology. So it's mixed, mixed group. I think the students, you know, they all learn from each other. So that's a very great. Yeah which I think is important with that community at that beginning when you're, especially as a college student and whether you're into the art program, design program, is just getting in that group of being able to work together and communicate effectively. Exactly. Yeah, especially when they uh, graduate from the program and in the real life, they are gonna working with many different people. And even let's think about the designer um, if you're a designer in a company, uh, you're going to work with marketing people, HR people, clients. Um, you know, even if you're just a freelancer, you're still talking with clients, you understand your customers. So knowing how to communicate and understand the empathy, understand other people, mm -hmm. and is is very important for, I will say, any, no matter which major you are in now. Yeah. <laughs> No, I agree on that one majorly <laughs> with empathy um, and communicating. Uh, what advice would you give to students today, whether they're in the design or art field? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have many advice for them. And so first I will say design and art still very competitive arrow. Um, if you want to get your name there, if you want to find an internship, um, maybe a job. Um, first, you can always start with the one that you know near you. Either it's going to be a campus job, right? Or maybe you have friends, family that want to have a poster or maybe business card design. Those will be great opportunity for you to have on your resume. Um, but I will say, enter competition, design art competition, is a very great way for you to get your name there. Yeah. Um, I think the second one will be, I also mentioned it during my talk, is self-learning. 
Um, now, you know, thanks for the internet, there's lots of, you know, learning resource. Um, you can also learn a lot from the professors, you know, you know from the professors here, and they have years of experience. So if you set up office hour with them, um, I'm sure all of them willing to share uh, all those experience with you. So find the resource online, but also find the resource that's just close to you. Yeah. And definitely, I agree on that one. It's important to have all those different resources and avenues available for a student and <laughs> to never stop learning. Yeah. Um, another question, what inspires you to do personal work and is your personal work always functional? Mm -hmm. So I think that's, this is a really good question. Um, I will say what inspired to me to do the personal work is for me, it's more like, first my MFA trained me that, you know, having a studio and I have studio practice. Now I think it might become a way of express who I am, mm -hmm. you know, as a people, as an artist. Um, because as a Chinese woman in the United States, I always feel you know in between position. Um, people all have different you know habits, but I think the design and art for me is the one to express who I am. Um, yeah. So in turn, the second part is about when. I determine is ends, is that what it is? Um, is your personal work always functional? Oh, I will definitely say no, not at <laughs> all. Yes, like sometimes I, you know, I just try something and it just doesn't work. I, so sometimes I know that personally, I don't like it. So I can, I can say it doesn't work, but sometimes I get that from, the people who vis visit my studio and or maybe sometimes especially in the design if um, something is too similar to other designers work and i will say it's better to say no and first so i stop that you know because you want to make sure that it's more like unique is you so there's i will say there's lots of different definition about how i understand um, doesn't work but I would say there's lots of failures during the process for sure. Um, that's one advice I want to give to students is, let's say if you do send out um, application to a competition or to an exhibition, it's very normal that you get lots of rejections. So no matter what, you know, either you are gonna emerging or new artists or you are a well-known, we all get a lot of rejection letter, you know, every day. I have, I have an Excel form. So I have a one that applied. I have the one I heard I get in, but I have lots of that I got rejections. So I will say um, it's normal, you know, if something doesn't work, you just need to uh, keep making and just keep doing um, because you are making something you have very passionate about. So that's a key thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I definitely agree. Keeping that, keeping on, I have my own personal uh, rejection files too, which is like, oh, <laughs> but it's good to remember like, mm -hmm. oh, I did apply for this, but I didn't, it's like knowing, almost got it, but someone else did, but then knowing, oh, here's the ones I did get into. Yeah. Another thing is if, okay, maybe this year you did not get in and you keep making after three, five years, eventually you're going to be there right yeah yeah no definitely uh let me see if there's any other from the chat is there anything you miss from not being in minnesota or south dakota anymore because you did say you before i know this wasn't in the talk but you were from um Min you china minnesota and then you went and worked over in south dakota mm-hmm um, anything of missing other than the weather? <laughs> yeah, I, I do mention that I miss the time during the Christmas. It's very beautiful. And I also very miss the people there. I think, I don't know, maybe it's because of weather, but uh, the people 
there we feel very close and even today i still keep a lot of contact you know i send out cards during christmas with those people so i will say the people um there um if i able to find ways to visit i will definitely be there and visit those people yeah no definitely and i definitely hope you can come up here to valley city state university to see our building and see our just our beautiful space which your show worked beautifully in our space and pushing our artwork and our gallery even further so we thank you so very much on that thank you so much angela and this is very great for me and thank you for the opportunity you are welcome it looks like we have nothing else from the chat so again chowin thank you again for agreeing to do this virtually and for everyone else tuning in, there is a small reception we are doing in honor for you <laughs> of just a little art reception, cookies and punch. Please come over to the Center for the Arts. Uh, right now at 301, there's cookies and punch and it's there till about four o'clock. So we hope you will stop by and we will see you all soon. Next show is our high school exhibition and our next talks will be our seniors. And the first one will be Bailey Nelson, who will be our first digital design graduate. So stay tuned, folks, and go Vikings. Thank you.